King's Quest V is probably the most infamous in this series, but I attribute it to mostly growing pains. Sierra Adventure games are always one jump ahead of the curve. It's an absolutely gorgeous game from any angle. Hand-drawn backgrounds, little touches of animation everywhere to add life and vibrancy to an otherwise static scene, a fitting and memorable soundtrack, and being one of the first games to take advantage of the relatively new CD-ROM technology, and it was able to be one of the very first fully voiced adventure games. Have you previously played King's Quest V? Now this game was unlike anything I'd ever seen before, and this was my reintroduction back into PC gaming. See, we weren't allowed to talk about this kind of stuff in school or in public, just because being called a nerd or a dweeb back then still carried with it a certain connotation of fear. So, like the Dungeons and Dragons players of the era, we had to carry out our conversations in secret, away from prying eyes, with others of our ilk. But perhaps the greatest upgrade to the engine was the brand new interface system, one that would become the basis for all future adventure games right up until present day. Instead of the text parser system and maybe limited mouse mobility, you now have a fully graphical interface. Four icons for move, look, interact, and talk, as well as a simpler inventory system. The pouch is empty. Before, you had to type use blank on blank, but now it's all point and click, baby. This allowed for a whole new paradigm of puzzles you could solve, now that the level of interaction has been increased dramatically. What's this? As amazing an accomplishment as this game is, it's a bit weird. And I blame this on a couple of things. First, I think the developers got a little bit overexcited and, quite frankly, a little bit mired in this new technology and the complexity of it all. And this game was the reason that we coined the term Sierra Logic. The pie and the yeti, need we say more? I'll save the complaining for later, but first, the good stuff. King's Quest V takes place one year after the events of King's Quest IV, and continues upon the story in King's Quest III. All is peaceful and quiet in Daventry once more, as King Graham, now back to sterling health, is found out taking a leisurely walk, and returns to find his entire castle has been replaced by a less attractive hole in the ground by a mysterious and powerful sorcerer in a black cloak. Obviously a bit distraught by this observation, Graham is curious as to what the hell is going on when offered help by a passing by talking owl named Cedric, who explains that the evil wizard Mordak was responsible and takes Graham with him to the land of Serenia to meet another wizard named Crispin who can perhaps help. I don't know Crispin is familiar with Mordak, but he isn't sure of his motives. He does, however, provide you with the power to speak my to animals heart. and his old useless magic wand, which doesn't work. Here's my old wand. He then makes a judgment call in which Graham and players alike will rue for the remainder of the game and perhaps for the remainder of their entire lives. He decides to send Cedric with you. Yes, you don't be such a coward. Yes, the squeaky voiced cowardly owl will be your travel companion for the entire journey. Look, you're not even five paces out of Crispin's house and he's already getting on your tits. I mean, God help him, I know he means well, but. Graham, watch out! A poison a snake! A poison a snake! Congratulations, Paul! You made your 1,000th annoying Cedric Joe! Really? Yes, and as a reward, you'll be granted any wish you uh, want. Uh, um, uh, I wish I had time to prepare. I, I, I wish I didn't have to say a poisonous anything ever again. Yeah, oh, oh. Let me try this out. A poisonous snake? Oh. A poisonous snake? Yeah. Yes. A poisonous snake? <laughs> a poisonous snake! A poisonous snake! The poisonous snake! The game is filled with bizarre leaps of logic and a dependency on the suspension of disbelief. You'll have to help an incredibly depressive and entirely ungrateful tree, gain the loyalty of a colony of ants, save the business of every single shop in town, Rid the land of an evil witch by stuffing her into a genie bottle, escape roving desert bands, and we're not even into the second area yet. The land of Serenia is amazingly diverse. Within a hundred yards of your starting position, you'll find a temperate area, a rainforest, a sprawling desert, and marshlands. This is either an effect of some bizarre weather anomaly, or game designers just wanting to do everything with their new creative freedom. 
too much, guys. Back it down a little. I know you're excited. But this is nothing in comparison to the puzzles in this game. Let me introduce you to the first rule of King's Quest V. Take anything that isn't nailed down. And if it is nailed down... A POISONOUS SNAKE! And if it is nailed down, look for the loose nail or solve the nail removing puzzle. And as useless as something being offered might be, chances are near 100% that you're going to need it later. Take for example well, this pie salesman. What possible use could a pie be on your travels? Surely there are better ways to secure rations for a long journey, but just go ahead and buy it. Sir, we'll come back to that. I would like that. to purchase one of your custard pies. Most of the puzzles in the game, I'll admit, can be fairly intuitive, but there are many that defy normal thinking and revert to Sierra logic. Yeah, I'm looking at you lure the elf out of the bushes with emeralds and trap him in a puddle of honey. Let me go! I won't get into many specifics, but know that just about any problem Graham is exposed to could be solved with a little common sense, instead of being quite literally shoehorned into the exact solution the addled brains of the writer set forth for you. We do, however, learn the majority of the story here in Serenia from a traveling gypsy fortune teller. It turns out Mordak's motive for spiriting away your family and castle are direct consequence from Alexander's actions in King's Quest III. I just happened to stumble across some magic spells and accidentally turned your brother into a cat. You all remember how Alexander, then named Gwydion, escaped the evil wizard Mananan by transforming into a cat, of course. Well, this is vengeance. Mordak is the younger brother of Mananan and is holding the entire royal family hostage to coerce Alexander to turn Mananan back into a human again. Alexander, of course, cannot. I mean, the kid can't even lace up his tunic properly, much less perform any kind of magic that isn't laid out before him explicitly in some sort of ancient tome. Alright, that's not quite fair. Uh, he did do a few cunning things back in Looter, but the kid can pour water out of his boot without having some sort of instructions on the heel. So, after solving everyone's problems in Serenia proper, we go back to face our mortal enemy from the beginning of the game. The poisonous snake! The second rule of King's Quest is thou shalt not kill. Otherwise, we would have bashed this snake's skull in hours ago and saved us from the ridiculous solution of how to clear the path forward. You can't stuff him in your pouch, you can't move him with a stick, and of course, you can't use the hammer to make a new snake-shaped indentation in the soil. Instead, you just click everything in your inventory on that thing until discovering that waggling your tambourine in its face is enough to scare it away. By this time, you would have gotten quite sick of Cedric's incessant nagging. <laughs> going into town, I'll just wait for you here. Ooh, I'll wait for you here, Graham. I don't like that place. Ooh, watch out for the bear, Graham. Ooh, there's nothing but a hot, dry desert for the west. Well, there you are. Go if you want to. I'll wait here. Come on, Cedric. Help me, I'm caught. Ooh, help. Let's turn back. But fear not, because... Graham, help me! Cedric! Cedric's gone. Cedric's gone. Cedric's gone. Cedric's gone. Yeah. And you can just tell how bummed Gran is about all this. It turns out Cedric was kidnapped as a usurper in the realm of Queen... Isabella. Isabella. Get it? She's about to kill you for the same reason, but a quick harp serenade Wait, eases her up a little bit and she gives you a chance to free yourself by killing a yeti which has moved into her domain. Yonder's the crystal cave. There you will find a yeti. You have many things, or at least should have many things for inventory at this point, so you try all the logical options. Excuse me, can we talk? Then you go more and more illogical until you finally see it. The process of elimination can take you no further. It's either that, or you just do not have the right item to beat this thing. With pain in your heart, and disdain for the designers, you click on it, and in turn, click it on the Yeti. It was the pie, the, the, the pie from the beginning of the game. The pie you could not eat because it was destined for this. For this! <laughs> I mean, of all the possible ways to kill... <laughs> Sierra! <laughs> Poisonous snake! <laughs> That's better. Pie. Yeti.
after you're reuniting with him, Look, Graham, there's a boat here. Maybe we can use it. You come across a homey little island you figure must be worth exploring. Yonder lies the castle of my father, Mordek. And the only way to make it through to said castle is by passing through the Sphinx Gates from Neverending Story? Never make it! He'll never make it! Too bad. It looks like the eyes have it. Okay, let's try that again with a little logic. One trapes through a quite frankly simple maze, and you end up in the Pantry of the Dam. It's here when we first meet Princess Cosima, who will become another major player in the series. She's initially wary of you, but dangles something shiny in front of her face and she becomes completely docile. Her story is that she was stolen away from her home, known only as the Land of the Green Isles, in order to marry Mordak. She of course refuses and is doomed to be a scullery maid until she agrees. You promise to rescue her from her slavery once you're ready to leave, but for now, all that's left to do is to find your family and castle, all of which are being held in a glass bottle in Mordak's laboratory. The only defense you can muster against Mordak is a magical one. However, your wand is less than useful. You have to charge it up by stealing Mordak's wand while he sleeps, and stick it on this overly complicated contraption, but you'll be completely flummoxed on how to start it up. It's obvious that the thing is designed to transfer magic power from one thing to the other, so logic dictates something equally magical would start the process. Ah, but this is King's Quest V. Logic has no place here. Because this machine is an enigma, they can run it however they damn well please and is kickstarted by... Now get ready for this. Tossing a moldy piece of cheese in it. Why cheese? I don't know. Maybe the developers just said, screw it. Let's just get to the final battle ASAP and screw everything in between. And so they did. But What's I've got to say here? that the final showdown is pretty Why? cool. Mordak swipes his wand back from you and apparently has just enough juice left for one more good shot. Really? And who would decide to come fluttering on in through the window but our good buddy Cedric. And there was much rejoicing. Graham has only learned four spells, which will either be used to transmogrify him into animal form or conjure a miniature rainstorm. And you basically use these to have a battle of wits against Mordak. He'll turn into something and you must counter it using your limited knowledge. Eventually you'll beat him, but more due to a stupid decision on Mordak's part if anything else, and your newly charged wand decides to stop working. Now why won't you work? Hmm, that contrivance number 46. Cosima pokes her head in and Crispin decides to also finally, come to help personally. And where exactly was he during the entirety of this life and death struggle, just away? Plot contrivance number 47. He decides Graham has had his fun, but now it's time to make things right, as well as retelling us the entire freaking plot again. And I found out that your son, Alexander, had the dubious distinction, if you may, of turning Mordak's brother, Mananan, into a cat some time back. It doesn't take a great genius to figure out that Mordak took your family and castle in revenge to try to persuade Alexander to restore Mananan back to his old self. I did discover, as now I see, that your castle and family were miniaturized and imprisoned inside a glass bottle. So poof, 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 the family is back to normal again and the reunion is a joyous one. My joy knows no limits. Everyone gets to meet Cosima and Alexander springs upon the situation to hit on her pretty ferociously before she's transported back safely to the land of the Green Isles. The castle is restored and everyone lives happily ever after. It's hard for me to condense my feelings about this game. It really is a technical showcase for the time. I mean, the fact that it would have full voice actors, it, well, maybe not voice actors, but it had voices, but, but, but it had full great backgrounds, it had lip syncing, it had a full score, tons of characters. I mean, the amount of ground that this game broke was truly staggering. It just didn't break that ground very well. No, 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 no don't get upset, don't get upset. Remember, remember, I, love these games. I love all of these games, and you'll also be very happy to know that the next game in the series elevates the Sierra Adventure game to a whole new level. It's peak and zenith with King's Quest VI. Air today, gone tomorrow. Just a minute. Oh yeah.
end, Cedric gets brought back to life. Ooh, a poison a snake! <laughs> A Poisonous Snake by me. Um, a Poisonous Snake. A Poisonous Snake! I should be looking into the camera, right? That would be preferred. Okay. The Poisonous Snake. See, that actually sounds cool. I know, it is. It, it <laughs> uh, sounds very Shakespearean. Yeah. Now, what is the nature of what this character is? So he just walks in, he's just like, He's like, look out, a Poisonous Snake! And then just... That's oh, and he dies? No, that, 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 he doesn't say anything. Oh, he doesn't do anything else. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so they built a whole animation for this guy to come in. You got to say a He'll come in, he'll land, he's like, look out, it's a poisonous snake. And then he just walks out. And then he's like, okay. Okay. There you go. Consider yourself warned. All right, I'm gonna. I have to become like I'm a method actor. Okay. So I he's also to... an owl. If this helps. Okay. So he's I'm an owl go... with a vest and a monocle. Okay. And he's very annoying. He's an owl. He's an owl. Wait a minute. I thought he was a dude. So he's an owl. He's an owl. Okay. okay so so he flaps in. Woo! A poisonous snake. Okay. So now I'll do it in character. All right. That works. Okay. So flapping in. Flapping in. Ooh, a poisonous snake! <laughs> I was—I really believed you were an owl there for a quick second. <laughs>